Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. For this video, we're gonna be featuring Ecampus stratus, or the Pink Zebra Beauty, or PBZ for short. I owe an apology to a lot of people because I've been promising this video for probably close to a year and a half or two years now. So hopefully these guys are still around that have asked for it because we're gonna finally do it. Basically, it's gonna be another rehousing video. I'm doing a ton of rehousings now that we're in the new tarantula room and I have more room to put things into prettier enclosures, which is why there have been so many of these videos. Plus, it also affords me the opportunity to catch these guys guys out and about for Billy to get in there really close with the camera and get some good footage of them. So enough of me talking, let's get into the actual video. All right, here we're going to finally rehouse my Eupalastris campistratus or the Pink Zebra Beauty or the PZB. I think I have to apologize to a few people out there because I've been saying I was going to do an update video on these for, oh gosh, probably about a year now. And I did plan on doing it, but I kind of got caught up with other things. The male, hopefully I'll be able to find footage of it, but that one actually matured last year and I sent him off to breed. This is the female that just molted, as you can see by the molt behind her, and I did stick a cricket in there, so she just had her first post-molt meal. But I picked these guys up as slings in October of 2017 after passing them up a couple years earlier. Like an idiot, Billy and I, she took me to a pet store to get tarantulas for my birthday, and they had one. The guy was going to sell it to me for very cheap, and I was like, nah, I'm not interested in that, and then kicked myself in the butt later on. But we finally got some from Fear Not, and they actually hear some footage from my best beginner species where I featured them in there because these guys are considered to be an awesome beginner tarantula if you can find them. So at the time, there were about a eh, third of an inch slings or so, and I had them in AMAC boxes, and I filled them up with about two inches of dirt. And one thing I noticed right off the bat is both of them burrowed right down all the way to the bottom and then created an extensive system of tunnels, different entrances. One of the other issues I had with them early on, and I normally don't bring this up a lot with other species, but they would burrow and fill in the burrows. I would watch them go into pre-mold, I would watch them molt, and they would not come back up to get food. So what I ended up doing with these guys is opening up the burrows a little bit, leaving a pre-killed cricket right up at the top, and what would happen is they come up and eat the cricket. So be aware that if you set these guys up, they do like the burrow. They're almost, I'd almost consider them fossorial early on. But if you give them too much substrate, they are one of the species I've found that will burrow all the way to the bottom and kind of get lost in that. So keep that in mind. I would have probably been better off starting them in dram vials when I first got them instead of the larger, I think the AMAC boxes are two by two by four. So if I did them again, I would definitely start them in something smaller so they can't get lost in those enclosures. As juveniles in February 2018, I moved them into 16 ounce clear plastic containers so I could watch them a little bit. And again, they continued to burrow and this time there wasn't quite as much room for them to burrow so they didn't get lost. And then about a year later, I moved them into these, which are, I believe they're about two quart or so. I've been trying to find them. I will put the brand up when I do the video, the notes on the video, but they haven't had them in stock lately. I got them from Amazon, but they did some burrowing again, both of them in this until they hit about the four inch mark or when the male matured, he was out and about obviously looking for a lady. This one hasn't used a burrow in quite some time. As a matter of fact, I think the cork bark is probably under there. So enough talking for a moment. Let's get into the actual rehousing part. And I'm not sure how to go about this here because she's uh, very laid back. Turn the cage around, maybe? Uh. There you go. There you go. No, you don't want to bite that. <laughs> she's a spunky little thing. All right, so there she is. And why they get the name Pink Zebra Beauty is those hairs on the legs. If you see, hopefully they're coming out. We got two of it. Billy's trying to keep the camera super steady. I'm trying to keep this super steady. But you see those pinkish hairs. They really are gorgeous and adorable little spiders. And supposedly, once they get to be adults, they calm down quite a bit. But mine have been kind of, you know, the typical skittish. So what we're going to do is slide this over carefully. She's not moving yet. Give me a favor and just slide that light out of the way. Thank you. And we're just going to try to get her right out here without her freaking out. She's already like, dude. Go ahead. There you go. There she is. And this will give her plenty of room. This will probably keep her to it. Now, the new enclosure is 
a 12 point, I think it's 12 and a half inches by nine by nine inches or so. I get these off Amazon. I will put a link. I didn't put a link originally when I started talking about these guys because they weren't going to sell them anymore because apparently they've had a difficult time shipping them without them cracking, but they've definitely up their game as far as packing these guys up. And the last, I think, eight I've bought have come in perfect condition. And then what I did is bought some of the solvent and put on a little clasp little hinges. My buddy Charles showed me this trick, so this was not my invention. He was using these and passing it on to me, so thanks, Charles. Now, for the substrate, we have BioDude substrate, which, again, you can use topsoil, cocoa fiber, peat. You can mix them together. You can add in some vermiculite, whatever you want. I like this stuff. I've been buying it. It's just convenient for me. I like the consistency of it, and I've been using it for a lot of my tarantulas lately. We have, obviously, our cork bark hide. We'll see if she does some burrowing in there. You know, and now we're giving her some extra space to burrow. We have some New Zealand sphagnum moss, and I've been using leaf litter for everything because it's sterile and I like the taste. I have no idea where that just came from. Hey, son. Do you eat it <laughs> like when you're hungry from, there? What movie is that from? <laughs> I, uh, and then we have leaf litter in here because I just like the way it looks. That's what I was going for, but that line just... It, let's see if anybody can figure out where that's from. So, and obviously the water dish. I actually distracted myself with my own bizarre rantings there. So we have the water dish, which we'll fill up after the fact. So this one here, this should probably keep her right to when she puts on some more size to adulthood. I believe they get about five and a half, six inches or so. So a medium sized spider, medium to large. Again, temperament wise, they have been very shy as slings. They did a lot of burrowing. They, a lot of burrowing as slings and even juveniles. As an adult, she's been, or a sub-adult, she's been a little skittish, but again, you see how she acted there. That's pretty much what I expected from her. Now, as far as temperatures, this is one of the spiders I got later on when the tarantula room was usually kept about the lowest. It would get about 72 or so in the winter. In the summer, it would be the upper 70s to sometimes even 80 degrees. These, this is a slow-growing species early on. It took forever for her to reach about the one and a quarter inch mark, but I will say once she hit that mark and once the male hit that mark, they seem to put on a lot more size and bolt more frequently. So it kind of took a long time for them to hit that you know inch and a quarter, but then once they hit that, then we got to see them kind of pick up their game and get you know put on some size. Feeding wise, as slings, I fed them twice a week. I was pre-killing first because they were so tiny. Later on, I was using small roaches. For feeding, you can use roaches, mealworms, crickets, whatever you want. Obviously, when they're small, you might want to use pre-kill. They will scavenge feed. Once they put on some size, they will hunt. As for feeding schedule, it doesn't matter what your feeding schedule is. Use what works for you. I feed slings twice a week because I want to get them out of that fragile stage more quickly. But I've had people that tell me they feed theirs once a month. It, that's totally fine. As an adult or sub-adult now, I feed her usually once every week, sometimes every week and a half or so. It honestly depends. As far as food items, she's eating large crickets, no problem. I drop one or two in. But again, roaches would work just fine. Mealworms, whatever you prefer. So there she is, the E. Campistratus Pink Zebra Beauty. Gorgeous spider, so glad I finally got one and glad I finally have one that I can show off that looks like an adult female. And for people, again, looking for one of those good, quote unquote, beginner species, these guys are definitely ones to check out. All right, again, these make great beginner species. They were actually on my first beginner species list, but unfortunately, they're a little more difficult to come by than some of the other standard beginner tarantulas, which is why I think they don't make the list very often anymore. However, if you keep a keen eye out, you can often find them for sale. In the United States, they tend to come around every once in a while. Somebody will get slings and import them. And if you see them again, you want to make sure you grab them up. Don't be like me and make the mistake of not grabbing it because it took me another couple of years to find them again. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you enjoyed the video enough to subscribe very much appreciate click the little circle up there if you'd like to check out some more videos beforehand you can find them over there if you take the time to comment know that i will take the time to respond that's all for this one hope you're all well we'll catch you all next time